Gentlemen, good afternoon and welcome to Casillo de San Marcos National Monument for your National Park Service and our weapons firing program for you today. Before we start with the firing demonstration, I'm required to go over some safety guidelines for both your safety and the preservation of this old fortress. First one, of course, is the building itself. This is the oldest stone fort in the continental United States. Construction began on this structure October 2nd, 1672 making this place close to 350 years old. For the United States, that's considered pretty significant. It's made out of a local native shellstone called Coquina, once described by builders falling apart in their hands while putting this place together. And today, we accommodate close to 800,000 visitors a year. One of the many challenges of the National Park Service is trying to figure out how to keep a building made out of seashells in one piece while allowing you all to come visit. One of the things we've decided is to ask the park staff, the volunteers, and all of our visitors to all do our parts to help us preserve this place by simply not climbing, sitting, or standing on these walls. The less contact we have with these walls, hey guys, this is a national park. Please don't throw bottles over the side again. We'll pick that up for you. Thank you. Please help us preserve this place, ladies and gentlemen, by not throwing your trash on the floors, by not sitting or standing on these walls. It's also a 35-foot fall to the bottom, so again, we ask you to not sit on walls while you're here. And those of you in the back, please make sure you're standing on the wooden bumper and not the wall right where you're at. And everyone here at the front, please stay behind this fence. Since while, while we're doing this demonstration, there is real black powder here, so for our safety as well as yours, stay behind the fence until we say everything is safe at the end of the program. But because we're using real black powder, when we fire this weapon, it will be very loud. If you have any small children with you, please make sure they cover their ears or cover their ears for them when the time comes. But we will let you know when it is time to cover your ears. Now on to the good stuff. The cannon were about the fire. Historically, this cannon was just simply called a six-pounder iron gun. Relatively small for the history of this place, but still an impressive weapon. This cannon was capable of throwing a baseball-sized, six-pound, solid iron ball about as far away as you see that lighthouse. That is a mile and a half away. But as you explore this place, you'll find larger weapons. Down by the flagpole, there's a collection of what are called 16-pounders, 18-pounders, and 24-pounders. Those weapons are capable of throwing their shots up to three miles downrange. The real question is, could they accurately hit a target three miles away? That answer is no. But just imagine being out there when these shots are fired. You hear the sound of gunfire, then you see that splash in the water, you see that cannonball bouncing across the beach. You might think a little differently of moving too close to this place while it is firing its weapons. And while you know this building is capable of firing its weapons. And the closer you get to this place, the more accurate those weapons become. But the job of this fortress was not to always reach out and hit those targets. The job of this place was to scare people, scare people back. As long as everyone is scared and pushed away, the supply lines can keep coming. And the shots that these weapons fired, they didn't explode. They were solid metal balls. And while we ask you to not sit on these walls due to how fragile they are up close, there are parts of this building where this outer wall is over 10 feet thick. And that basically means You'll run out of food and water long before enough cannonballs cause this place to collapse. So the job of this place was to survive by pushing the enemy away. Throughout its history, this building has been under attack. Ships and soldiers have surrounded this town. Enemy cannon fire has impacted these walls. And men, women, and children have taken shelter within the courtyard below. But every attack on this building has failed, and every transfer was done by talks and treaties, not the actual fighting. And ladies and gentlemen, for today's presentation, we are dressed out to represent the Spanish soldiers that once lived and worked here. I, myself, am a park ranger, the rest of the crew, they're volunteers. And it is the volunteer program that keeps the National Park Service running. So please give our volunteers a hand for coming out here. And ladies and gentlemen, historically, a well-trained cannon crew of this time period has been known to fire one of these small guns or one of the larger weapons as quickly as a minute between shots. To be able to do that and get these teams of soldiers to be able to work that well together, they had to practice. What we will be demonstrating for you today is a training drill that they may have been using 200 years ago. Once again, it will be very loud. We will let you know when it's time to curb your ears. I hope you enjoy.
actually fire anything out of the weapon, and we don't even use as much gunpowder as they did historically. Back then, these charges, these cannon rounds, were described as being so loud, you would feel that noise going through your bones. Kind of like the explosives of the fireworks last week, and you feel those explosions. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll have the area opened up in just a moment. If you want to take pictures with any of us, you'll find us downstairs in the shade. So, we'll be down there for you in just a few minutes.